friends, in this live stream, we are going to be building this Tamiya racing truck. So I've already ripped it out of the box and laid it all out here on my bench in all the little baggies. So, well, yeah, we're going to build it. And on this iPad here, we have, once I logged into it, we're going to have all the comments. So I'm going to be chatting with some of you guys live. Once the advert goes, if you've got any questions, far away. I can have a little chat with you lot as well. So if you guys let me know what you lot have been up to, I'll let you know what I've been up to too. Right, and as usual, I'm completely disorganised. I've got no tools ready, got nothing else ready, apart from my chicory and my nuts. Uh, not that anyone, any of you care about that. Right, so, when this thing's built, it's going to look like that even though I'm probably going to paint it in the game over colours. I don't know yet. So you guys let me know in the comments what you got. Oh, pardon me, reckon. And the idea with this racing is, is that all of us are going to have the same truck and not really many upgrades allowed. We're allowed these shocks, oil filled shocks, some ball bearings, and that's about it really. I want to put an Eco Boost servo in there because it's got to be a cheap servo. And these are quite fast as well. Uh, we got these foams here to put inside the tyres. Other than that, I think it's got to be pretty stock. So we're not going to bother reading all this stuff. Right, so number one, we need this. Um, I don't know if these are labelled or not. I suppose we'll just make up as we go along. So I'm going to donk you down here. Right, on my tripod. I've got to plug you in as well, because otherwise you're going to go flat and then the live stream will end. So if you look down here, look, I've got my power bank on my tripod. We're all plugged in. No idea how long this build's going to take. You guys let me know in the comments, how long do you think this build's going to take? What do you reckon? Right, what are you guys saying? What are you saying? What LiPo are you going to use? Oh, I don't know. I'm not even sure if we're allowed to use a LiPo. Uh, I, I assume we are. Right, so chassis first. Like people are saying two hours, 3.5 hours. Is Raz okay? Yeah, last I heard of Raz, he's fine. He's in a different country while all the BS is going on. Right, so I don't think we need that. I'm going to try and get rid of some of this stuff off the bench. Just so that we've got a little bit more space to wrench. So, do we need any of this? No. Right, so this is the thing with a live stream. It's not edited, obviously. So, you guys can see a full representation of how one of these builds go. It's not going to be as entertaining as a live as a as an edited video. Because obviously I can't cut bits out. So I've got to try and film it in as entertaining way as possible. So, saves my job editing. And it means I can have a little chat with you lot. And I've done a little build on a Tamiya Porsche before that we took racing that was really similar. So I thought this time around we'll just do a little Ivo. Right, that's the body. We've got the body there, we'll put that over to one side because we won't be painting this in this live stream. I just want to get just a, just a truck built. And we might get the electrics in, we'll see how it goes. Right, so we need that. And then it also says about this stuff here. Put you down here so you can see a bit better. Right. So we've got the chassis and we need this stuff here with gears in it. So A. Is there a bag A? Where does it say? I know these are normally normally on Tamiya's, if I remember correctly. This is not the right one, but normally it does say on the mould. Yeah, number well, these are numbers here. But normally it should say what parts it is. Hmm. Doesn't on that one. Okay, we don't need this yet. Wheels and tyres, put them to the side. Just trying to keep the bench a little bit organised. All right, gears. Where's gears? All right, so we've got this stuff here. How much did it cost? Oh... Uh, the kit was about £150, roughly. Probably about $160, something like that. Right, I'm going to put all that stuff in there. We're going to need all that. 
I mean, these kits are really cheap. It's about as budget and cheap racing that you can do. However, if everybody's got the same cars, it keeps the racing really fair and fun. Right, that there. Don't think we need that yet. I was going to pull this stuff out of the bags for now. It's a bit easier to see what's going on. There's definitely going to be someone telling me I'm doing it wrong. But there always is, no matter what you do, there's always going to be someone saying you're doing it wrong. Where can I get it? Well, I'll put a link down below in the description where you can get it from. But we're going to be racing these at the South Cams Radio Controlled Car Club. So if any of you guys have got one and want to build one, then build one and join in. And you can race me up there. The club is in Papworth and they race on Monday nights. So if you want to race me, build one as well. Here's your chance to build one as well. Link in description where to get it from. So Redfin models here in the UK, uh, in America, Amen. Or of course there's loads of other places you can get them from as well. You don't just have to get it from them places. Addicted to our seasons, make sure you smash the thumbs up. That's it guys. Everyone smash the thumbs up if you can. It helps the algorithm push the video. All right, ah, we've got gears in here. So this might be what we need. Logan says his VXL slash transmission broke. Oh dear. Yeah, that's the thing with this hobby. Stuff does break. It's a bit crap that stuff breaks, but it's part of the hobby. Too bad finding parts is nearly impossible. Yeah, I think that's why I'm getting them all out. Someone goes, oh, the man, Kev. No, not yet. There's a few little legal things that need sorting with the house first. But apparently it's getting there, and we should get the deal done soon. All right, so these are bearings. However, I don't think we're going to be using these. I'm going to pull them out anyway, because some of them we might use. So I'm going to pull those bearings out. But we actually got these bearings here that I got from Redfin Models, I think. Was it from Redfin Models? No, it might be from SC Models, actually. Andy got them for me. I think he got them from SC Models in Stevenage, actually, these bearings. The same with his air racing shocks. I think these come from SC Models as well. I think. It was a while ago. All right, so we've got bearings in there. Tamiya is pure plastic, is extreme. Yeah, they do like their plastic. Keeps it nice and cheap. I mean, I definitely wouldn't go with Tamiya for bashing. All right, so we've got some gears in there. Please do more Nitro RC car videos. Yeah, I do like the Nitros. I go through phases. We'll have to get more. I've got a few vintage Nitros upstairs I've got to get out at some point. Yo, brushless. No, no, not brushless, this one. This is brushed. We got, we got we all got to use a stock motor that comes with it. That's the whole idea of this race series, is to keep the cost down and put, put it down to the skill of the driver. So any of you guys that want to join in, oh, that's dirty in there. Any of you guys want to join in, you can build one too. Then come and race it at the South Cams Radio Control Car Club on a Monday night, Monday evening. That's when I'm going to race it. So, yeah, you guys should get one as well and join in. See how many of us we can get racing around there. Uh, uh, there. Some screws. Hopefully we'll get it built relatively quickly. Should have done all this off camera really. But as usual, live streams are not prepared. Get off the cuff, what happens, happens. Take your truck to Freedom Factory. Freedom Factory is in a different country, dude. It would be amazingly cool, but it's a different country. And to get it into container, I'd even have to take it apart because I've made it too wide. We'll have to strip the whole truck down, or well, not the whole truck down, but strip it down quite a bit to get it to fit into a container. All right, that there, I'm running out of little dishes here now. Uh, uh, when you get a twin turbo Lambo, oh, I don't know, I'll have to at some point. 
Uh, I've run out of these little trays now. Uh, we got oh, here's something else. We put some in there. There's in there. These in there. Oh, we've got more bags. I've not even opened these ones yet. Oh, gold. Oh, gold. Put those in these trays here, I suppose. Will you be building another monster truck? Yeah, I want to. Well, I've got to pay for this house first in the Isle of Man. And then I've got to see how much money I owe in taxes. And then my next thing I want to get is an extra 300 stump plane. And then we'll see how we get on after that. It'll be probably another monster truck for America. And then after that, it'll be saving up for a bigger property. Uh, that's got land and outbuildings and everything like that. Man, there's so many of these little bags everywhere. Man, I'm not going to get this done in a couple of hours, am I? If it takes any more than a couple of hours, we'll probably do a part two tomorrow. If it's any more than a couple of hours, I'm probably going to be fed up with it. I would imagine. All these parts are everywhere. Uh, more, more trays. Noah's I see the house, how you doing Noah? Got that, that. Oh my god, this bloody stuff everywhere. Look at all this. Look at all this stuff, man. I'll tell you what, in some of the kits, all the screws, you know, now the mates like associated, they put all the screws with the step that you're on, whilst in this you've got to go fishing. So a lot of the times, that's what can take all the time, is fishing for all the parts. All right, so if we look here now, look. Look, you've got all these different trays with bits absolutely everywhere. So hopefully, hopefully, it's not gonna to be too bad. Right, let's crack on. What are you guys saying? What do you know, guys? Yeah, all good things, Noah. Build a full-size Traxxas X Max. <laughs> that would be for someone like Traxxas to build. I want to promote my own brand. Someone says, where can I buy Raminator in the UK? That would be Taylor RT. Or you can order directly from Primal. Right, so if we look along here, look. It shows, by the looks of it, all the bits you need in that step. So we've got this gear here, then spur gear. See, so how are you supposed to find that? I mean, that's A. Is there like a parts... Is there like a parts tree A, is there? Well, that's D. Is there an A somewhere? I mean, some of you guys are... Oh, it might be this. It's probably that. Yeah, it's that. All right, and we've got bearing, one of those. But we're going to go ball race bearing. So that's that one, and then we need that shaft there. Oh man, I mean navigating yourself around where all the parts are is probably going to be the bit that takes all the time. If if you've got all the parts already laid out everywhere, it'll probably be really easy. Right, we've got that, then we need one of these, and that looks like not that. Right, that one. Right. Can you get the Emax drone? I think I've got one. Ah. Right, take it off my Game Over merch. Because it's getting a bit warm in here. But if any of you guys want any Game Over merch, hoodies, stickers, all that stuff, there's a link to that down below in the description. All right. So now we have to get all this lot and put it together. Donkey down there. 
Thanks for this clapper. I've got all this stuff here, look, what's coming up for future videos. It's all getting a bit cluttered in here at the minute. I'll try to have a little declutter and tidy it all up. And then all that happens, you start getting more stuff and you're back to where you were to start with. Right. So we have spur gear. I've got a bit of dirt in my eye. Damn it. Right, that goes on there. Do you, do you guys want to be closer like that? So you see what's going on? Or do you want a more overall picture? We'll mix it up a bit. So we've got that there. Try and make it so you can see what I'm doing and the instructions. Footage. Will you remove, review the TRX forever? Probably will at some point. Is Ian and Claire streaming anymore? Not at the moment. I think once they get a new house, maybe they will, but not at the moment. Right, and that by the looks of it, see we've got that, let me got that, let me got that. And then we got a pin. It goes in there. And then we got the spur gear that goes on there. And then that plastic bit goes on top. Yeah, there we go. Right, and then got the chassis and that sits in there. I've never built one of these. I think the other one that I built, is it going like that? Why is it not going? What? Maybe you've got to put that in first and then. I think this is a TT, is it TTO1 is it? Or TTO2 and the other one, the, the Porsche thing that we built was a different one. I'm not clued up about these kits here really, so. Come get in. Don't battle me. Oh, I, do you know what, I hate kits that battle you. When stuff battles you, it's not fun. I like stuff that goes together lovely. If I want something that battles me, I want to do my own kit. I want to do my own custom pro project. When you're building a kit, you want it just to go together nicely. That's probably wishful thinking, but there we go. Right, that in there. Is that in? Is that it? Is there supposed to be something else in there or not? Right, well, I think that's how it goes. Right, and part number two. We've got the prop shaft, that in there. This is not a how-to, by the way. This is more of a, you guys can laugh at me doing it wrong. And that in, is that supposed to have a bearing on it? Uh, no, by the looks of it. Is that right? It must have a bearing, or is that going later? Make sure shaft does not fall off, right, okay. The thing is, if I read everything, it would take me too long. I make the video boring, so I've got to try and get through it quite quickly. But that means I might well make mistakes. How are you supposed to, are you supposed to get that in? Right, so that in first. And then, right, right, there we go. That's in. But does that not get a bearing? Or does the bearing go in later? Right. And then we've got these things here, and that doesn't even look. Got these bits there, but they don't even show on this part. So, all right, we've got those screws there, and we need one there and one there. Three by ten. So, I've got a vernier caliper here. We need a three by ten countersink. Hopefully, that's these. So when you measure countersinks, you measure the whole thing. So that's near enough. I'll go retain on that one. And when you're measuring this sort of screw, you measure it from the bit where it sits, like that. So that's a 10 as well. All right, so we've got two of those. And then we need B8. I'm guessing that's the bits that hold the battery on. So we need part tree B now, which is... I have no idea. So, oh, here we go, here's B. So there we go, so we've got that one there. So 
So when I take these off, you can just snap these off, these things, but then you end up with a sharp bit. You could use a knife, but then you could cut yourself. I like to use these flush cuts. So these are like side cutters, but if it focuses, look, the blades are flush on this side. So when you, you put the flush side to the bit that you want to cut off, like that, and then you get left with a nice bit there, it's not sharp. Oh, we've got Tom Lee in the house. Is this a practice run before you build a Tamiya truck? This is the actual run, Tom Lee. We are building a Tamiya truck, that one there. But I've got another Tamiya truck I'm building actually, let me show you. Let me show you in here. So I'm gonna be building this Tamiya truck here as well soon, and the trailer there, and we're gonna do competitions different competitions one of them is going to be who can have the fastest one another one's going to be a drag race another one's going to be racing them around the track so i'm going to try and get i've got no idea 50 60 70 mile an hour out of it the people that drive these are really geeky and nerdy it's almost on hornby level so to get one and make it not stupidly fast i think would be fun this here's a new jet that i just got just got to put it together this thing's massive when that nose is on there that takes up like the whole room in here it's mass it's massive there's a real jet engine in there, look. So hopefully I won't break it. That's why I've got all these foam ones in there so I can practice first on these. Practice on these ones. And then once I can fly those ones, and hopefully, all being well, I'll be able to fly that one. But the trouble is, every time I fly a radio-controlled aeroplane, then that happens. Like what happened to that one up there? It crashed and it broke. I'm not very good with aeroplanes, so I probably shouldn't have planes this big. But it'd be fun for you viewers. And then if we come into this room, ah, get that lamp on. Hey, there's my baby there. Look. Down here, we've got a Hangar 9 Beast. This thing here's got a 111cc petrol engine in there, look. It's a biplane, so like a double decker. It's a pit for you plane people. Quite big. There's the wings for the jet. All right, back in here, enough of that. That's all for a future video. For this video, we gotta get this thing built. That's just what's coming up. So that's gonna be mainly on the main channel there, Kevin Talbot. Uh, some of these are gonna be on the RC channel. Some are gonna be on the main channel. I've got this little thing here, look. I've uh, got this thing here. Tom Lee just done a video on that. I thought it looks really crap. But on Tommy's video, it looked better actually than I thought it was going to look like. So we'll get that out at some point. Oh, loads more over there as well, look. So much stuff. I'm, I'm running out of time to do it all. Look, all that stuff down there to build and play with. Heli down there, drags are down there. There's a little plane down there. Look, I want to learn to fly before I fly the beast. So I'm going to fly that little biplane that you can see just poking behind the drags are there. I'm going to fly that one first. And then, then back in this room quickly. I do apologise. Then I want to fly this plane here, which is like a, a fairly big foamy plane. And then once, once I can fly that one, then we're going to go over to that big one over there. I mean, this was a dream plane of mine. I've always wanted one of those ever since they came out about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, but they stopped making them because the real plane crashed and the, the poor dude died and they stopped making them after that. But I want to hang it up on the wall up there. So I'm, I'm probably going to be on the lookout for another one. I want one immaculate one, like pristine. This one here is a little bit tacky in places. So this one here, I can enjoy and use it. And then the other one, I want to hang it up on the ceiling and have it as a nice one. That one I want to use as well, but not, I mean, I know, not all the time. Every now and then. All right. Enough waffle. Get back on with this build. Oh, Tommy says not great out of the box, but easy to make good. Oh, I've, I haven't really got the time to try and make it good. So however it is, is how it is. I, mean, I don't know any RC you can make good, really. But I don't know, it depends. If you've got a love for a certain RC, then you don't mind giving it the time to making it good. You know, like for me, Raminator, absolutely love it. It's like my favourite RC ever. 
So with that, I don't mind giving it the time to make it better. All right, I'll just put that down. One of my screws has rolled. No, it hasn't, is there? All right. This here is the screwdriver that I built my first ever hobby grade RC car with. So I'm going to start off with that as well. So my first ever hobby grade RC was this car here. The Tamiya Manta Ray that I got from... I got this from Moz Emotion back in the day. And, well, it started off as a Manta Ray, so that's what it looked like when I first built it. And I kind of modified it, or what I thought was modifications. Probably made it worse. And I built that particular car with this screwdriver when I was probably about 10 years old, something like that. That's what I've always loved the look of RCs, but never really had one. That was the first one that I had, and I was hooked ever since. Right, and these go in there. I don't know if I've got to go in a particular way or not. Man, we've been streaming for God knows how long. And I haven't actually done anything yet, so I'll best get cracking. Tommy goes, you'll hate that WPL for sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll just... I'll just use it and whatever happens, happens, isn't it? Lambo at Skate Park. Well, that was a deal if you could get me to 10 million subs last year and you failed. So no Lambo at Skate Park. Right, that's that done. Right, so next we need a motor. So we've got motor here. Get this thing off the end here. Don't need that. And then we need pinion gear. Little gasket thing. Gasket thing, pinion gear. Uh, grub screw. Are you telling me they're not actually putting the grub screw in the same thing as all the other parts? Oh, that's annoying. They make you look for stuff. Why? I mean, why would you not put the grub screw? If, if you get all these parts in one bag, why would you not put the grub screw? Put the little Allen keys in there. Why would you not put the grub screw in the same packet? So it could be in any one of these, I guess, couldn't it? Any one of these it could be in. Anything to make life. Oh, there it is, I put it there. It'd be nice if Tamiya actually put the screws in with the bag that you're going to use it in, you know, when you're building it. Because look, they've got these screws here, but then in another parts tray, they've got like, the same screws again. I don't see the logic. I mean, look, same screw there, same screw there. Why just not put all these screws in the same bag? Well, this is like just getting handfuls of screws and just putting them into random bags. That's what it feels like. All right. So we got that, we got that. Now we need an M6 screw. And yep, of course, it's not going to be in the same one. That's going to be in a different pot altogether again. So... M3 by 6, I'm guessing it's that one. So we get our vernier and we measure from the shoulder to the end of the thread. Yeah, that's near enough, six millimeters. They never bang on. All right, and then we need the motor mount, which is D3. So we need parts tree D, which is this. So we should really put these in order to make it easier. So this is, this is B. So we put B over here. What's this? H, all the way over there. D, put D there. What's this stuff? I don't know what this stuff is. A, that's A, right, cool. So A there, and some other stuff. Right, B, D, I mean. Right, so motor mount. Tommy would have finished building it already, he says the real Cletus. <laughs> Maybe. Well, Tam, well Tomley is a Tamiya fanboy. So he's going to know exactly, he'd probably do it with his eyes closed. Alright, so now you get that on there. You've got the vintage to the top. We line these little holes up on there. Sort of. And motor mount on there. It's got quite a few different holes there, I don't know if different holes are different gearings or not. On some of the Tamiyas, you change the mesh dependent on what pinion gear you got, but on this, it looks like they're all the same. 
So I'm not really sure which way to put the motor because look, if you look on there, look, the wires come out flat, but the vents on this, this is, I don't know, which way, which way does it go? Come on, Tom Lee, you know. Any new DJI products lately? Yep, I've got the the little mini four drone thing, whatever it's called. I've got to slap it on. If, if, right, does pinion go on first? I think we better put the pinion on first, All right. Pinion on, and then we need 15 millimeters from uh, not including gasket so gasket off again progress is slow people all right so we've got to set this to 15 millimeters like that stempy said he wants to fly your jet ha 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 right that there that there Near enough, not in it, am I? Not rocket science, is it? Right, that on there. Right, let's crack on, man. Come on, let's get this done. Let's try and get it done a bit quicker. Would have been in like half an hour, nothing's happened. Right, we're cracking on now, we're gonna go a bit quicker. Trouble is, I'm trying to read comments and go quicker. That slows down. Have you got the Outcast V2? Well, the 8S one, I have, yes. I was editing that video today and I've got a whole load of upgrades from M2C, custom RC upgrades. All right, that's on there. Let's, let's, let's hurry up. Let's hurry this along. Put that in there. Boom. Uh, oh, right, yes, yeah, so we do have to have it flat look so that the motor actually fits in. All right, good job we've done that. Uh, you can change gear ratios, right? Blah blah blah. You've got to change this if you want to. Well, I'll, I'll, hold on a sec. Oh, it is different. Oh, it is different. 21 tooth, 19 tooth. What's the stock one? 19 tooth. Ah, right. I did it wrong, guys. That's what happens when you rush. It is adjustable. It didn't look like it was. And he wants a spanner, spanner, multi-rotor RC world. Ah, yes. All right, the trouble is on my phone, oh man, I can't do it on the phone because for some reason on the phone, all the comments are completely blurred and I can't read them. All right, let me show you what the comments look like in the mirror. Look, I'll get the mirror. Look, can you see that? That's what all the comments are looking like. I can't see anyone's comment on the phone. See that? All these comments here, it's just a blur. I don't know why they're like that, but that's how they're like. And I'm logged into a different account on the iPad. So I can't make him moderate on that neither. So I'll have to do it later on, Andy. Rat boy in the house. Oh God, does this mean you're coming racing this week? Yeah, hopefully rat boy, if I get it built. Rat boy's going down there as well. Uh, I can't, I can't add any of you guys as admins on this because I'm on a different account. Uh, I'll have to add you guys as moderators later on. I can't do it on there, on the phone. It's, it's been an update probably on YouTube and there's a little bug going on. I just can't read the comments on there. So I've got to read the comments on the iPad. All right, where's my motor gone? There. All right, so we need to use, for 19 tooth, we've got to use the screws top to bottom. So we have to put the motor in like that. We'll just have to bend the wires out of the way. Progress is slow. I joined late. What did I miss? Um, <laughs> not much. <laughs> Whole load of waffling. You haven't missed much, dude. What do you think of DHK Optimus? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know what it looks like. Do you have Mavic 2 Pro? Eh? Oh, I don't know. I keep forgetting. I think I have. I keep forgetting what's what with those. 
All right, so we've got to bend this terminal like that. Now that goes in. Does that turn? Yep. All right, that's it. We're in. Next, we need four of those. I'm just going turbo here now. Four of those could do with a little dish, really. Could put stuff in that we're using for the actual part of the build. Put all those bits in there. So all the, all the bits for the actual that step are going in there now. Got to hurry up. Right, cover got, got to go on. That cover is D10. So D10, that's on here. Right, I've got to fly along. Fly along a little bit. Let's get this thing built. Faffing around. Do you have Phantom 4? I used to have a Phantom. But I sold it a long time ago. Right, that on there. I should really, right, let's get a nugger dug already. I'm faffing about ma ma manual. Let's get a nugger dug already. Noah goes, oh, okay, that 12th Street red piano piece is impossible. Told you, Noah. Are you giving up? If you can play that song, you are piano god. If you give up, you're not piano god. I don't blame you for giving up because I gave up as well. <laughs> but if you can play that song, that will be seriously impressive. Tommy goes, doing a kit build is time consuming, let alone doing it live, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't really take longer doing it live, but the trouble is, you're talking on there and you're not concentrating on the build. When you're on your own, you're just fully concentrated on the build and you can read stuff and make less mistakes. When, when I've got to talk to you guys, as much as I love it, it can take a bit longer. Nah, I never give up. There you go, Noah. I'll be seriously impressed if you can play that. If you can play it, then I'm probably going to learn it as well. All right, that's in. Next, we've got to build a differential. So, we've got that. We've got all those differential parts in here. So, we've got the cross pin, that gear, that gear, that gear. That gear and that gear. And then we need three of those little crappy screws. Which are somewhere, but I don't know where. Could be these ones, could it be that? Yep, probably those. Three of those, and then we need a diff thingamajig, which is one of those, and then one of those. And I'm probably just going to build both diffs at the same time. They look exactly the same. Right, so, uh, 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 that, that in there. Let's change the camera angle, keep it interesting. And so you guys can see a bit better what's going on. Just build it the faster way. Boom. <laughs> wait, wait until you see the main video. That'll be a boom on that one. And we've got to put these on there. What are these? Are they planetary gears, are they? I don't know what they're called. Toy gears. Let's call them toy gears. That right in there. And that on there, I'm talking to myself like a lunatic. I suppose you've got to be a bit of a loon, haven't you? To be a fully grown man playing with these toy cars, you've got to be a bit of a loon, haven't you? Someone goes, how big of a motor can you put in MT-10? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, no, James said he shredded his toy gears today. Put grease in the diff, says multi-rotor. Ah, so multi-rotor RC is Andy. Yes. Oh, man, let's see if I can make him a... What's, what's your fear? I've got to make Andy a moderator because he's going to try and help me with his build because he's built one already, but... All right. Ah, right. No one comment for a second. 
Uh, Add as moderator. Hopefully, I've got the right person. Right, I think I did it. Right, I guess there is multi rotor now moderator. Right, Mr. Multi rotor, give us a little. Give us a little comment, see if it worked. I might have just made someone a random moderator there, but it would really help if it is Andy that is. Yay, there we go. Andy's moderator. I managed to do it. Right, so what grease goes in there then? Silicon ear plug? Can I put silicon ear plug in there or has it got to be this stuff? Does the rule say this stuff? Baby oil. Oh, that'll make a mess, Mr. Tom Lee. Right, right, let's put this stuff in there. I don't know what happened there. I lost you there for a minute. It said reconnect. All right. Is it all back live? Yep, hopefully. Right. Well, right, I'll just put the grease in. We'll be fine. Up to you. Right, that'll do. I would probably put a silicon ear plug in there, but I don't know if it's cheating. This screwdriver here absolutely sucks, but it's the only one I've got to hand at the minute that, that fits these small screws. Does butter work? Probably, but Dean did that to Claire's RC, and then when she cleaned it out ages later, it stunk really bad. So, probably a bad idea. What's the plan with the truck? We're going to take a racing at my local club, South Cam's RC Club. So any of you guys that want to join in, build yourself one of these trucks and come along Monday evening. So is this a TTO1 race truck? I believe it is. Multi-rotor will confirm. He knows more than me. Well, I'll probably say it on the, will it say it on the cover. Yeah, TTO1 Type E chassis, that's what it is. There we go. All right, that's one diff built, and I think I'm going to jump the gun and build the next one just because it's probably going to be exactly the same. And it's quicker to do it while your mind is still fresh on the case. Right, those bits there. Are you going to take it for a rip when it's done? Not today, dude. Not unless we get it done in like another hour or so, which I doubt. So it's probably going to be a part two to this live stream at some point. Are you making it brushless? Uh, no, because we're all, we're all running brushed. I mean, you know, to keep it fair and cheap, everybody's got to run the same stuff. That's a good thing with a cheap racing series. Everybody can get involved. Everyone's got the same equipment. Fair racing. Makes the racing more closer. Man, there's so many questions about DJI drones. I don't know which ones I've got, guys. I've got a... Uh, Mavic Pro 1, I think. I've got a Mavic Air and I've got the latest Mini 4 Pro. There you go. That's what I think I've got anyway. I'm not I'm not really so clued up with all these names of all these drones and everything. You're going to race it on track? Yes, we are going to race it on a track. Is it only trucks as I'm local to there, plus the club I go to is too serious? Yeah, this club's not very serious. This club is just all about having fun. Uh, on a Monday, they race buggies a little bit, but it's only flat with no jumps. And they do GT12 and LMPs, I think. Can you go to car show sometimes? I did. I went to a car show a little while ago with Vinny. 
Did you get my info over converting promo to 3S? Oh, I don't know, dude. I had so many comments from like so many different people. And what people were saying is you've got to put a Beck, a Castle Beck onto the gyro. So I bought a Castle Beck. And I bought a 6S CSC as well. So I'm planning on making my promo 06S. That one there, look. And by the way, some of you guys, or any of you guys watching actually, can win that motorbike in a raffle. A raffle, not a raffle, a raffle. So you can win this in a competition. There's a link to that competition down below. And any of you guys have got a chance of winning it, I'm gonna modify this one or another one. I'm not sure which one yet. Uh, I've got two more, well, three more of these coming actually, and I'm going to have them at different states of modifications. Other stuff you can win is a Raminator like that one, but a brand spanking new one. Uh, something ending really soon actually. There's only a couple of days left. Uh, you can win both of these Gorgons. One of them's been on the channel, the other one brand spanking new. And also this lossy Super Bar Harvey. So if you click the link down in the description box, all the details for that are there. And you can enter those raffles for free as well. Even though I don't really promote the free entry anymore because even though I showed it on the video how to enter for free, people still got confused and it just filled the whole comment section up with people saying, I can't enter for free. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? Even though on the listing, I literally showed on the video how you do it. And, I, uh, and in the description, it showed how you do it as well. But yeah, everyone still asked, how do you do it? So I'll just give up <laughs> saying it is free because it caused more hassle than than what it was worth. But there is a free way to enter. Read the description, scroll down to the bottom, and it will tell you in there how you can enter for free. Anyone that asks how you enter for free, that is how. I'm not going to answer it again. Right. So I think that's this step done now. So we take one of the diffs, and now we've got to put bearings in. So we've got that. Bearing wise, it looks like we've got to have two of these and one of these. Is that right? One of these and one of them. Right. So, moving swiftly on. We need to put one of these bearings on there. Another one on that side. And then, ah, so that's where the bearing goes. So you've got to shove that bearing in the hole in there. And then we get this bevel gear and shove him on there. I'll tell you what, guys, any of you parents that are watching, if any of your kid want, kids want Xboxes and stuff, you're better off getting them something like this because you're actually learning how to do real wrenching and then you're going out and you're racing against real people and real drivers and it's just such a good fun hobby i mean if you do xboxing i mean everything in moderation it's really anti-sociable right that's that in right so next attaching the rear arms i'm not sure why we've got that in there already because it's going to probably fall out again in a minute. Yeah, like that. So I'm going to leave that out for a minute. Uh, right, might as well prep this one because that's going to be the same. The other diff, get that ready. And the bearing, we'll just lob that, lob all that in there. Keep that all together. Right, next, attach the arm. So we need B14, so B parts, uh, B14 and B4. Right, 14 is that one. Trouble is, once you cut them off, you can't see what they are anymore. Right, so that one's 14. And then that one's 14. Looks like I've made it out of quite flexible plastic, so that's good. We like that, especially on a basher or on a cheap racer. Right, so 14, these are the lower ones, and we need B4 
which is the upper one. Is that that one? Yep, yeah, so that one's B4. Right. You can tell the difference actually because it's narrower on that end. Right, so there. And that one. Then we need diff cover A9. That's that. And then we need this piece, A10. And this piece, A5. All right, we're getting somewhere now, sort of. Definitely going to take longer than two hours, I'll tell you that. All right, get this camera out of the way again, because it's getting in my way. My son chooses watching you and ripping on his buggy than Xbox. Yeah, good boy, James. I mean, kids nowadays, all they want to do is sit in and play Xbox, a lot of them. All right, uh, so B14. Well, you've got to get it the right way around, so the angle bit that way by the looks of it. Is it? Right, so 14 to the lowers. Angle bit outwards, so that way. It does say to put grease on there, but I'm not going to bother. It's just going to make a mess. Um, and then that. Can we put that on now? I don't know if we can put that on now or not. Because we've still got to get this on. And we've got to get these in as well. And these in there. You can't even see what I'm doing, can you? You can't even see what I'm doing. Let's zoom you in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Nope, wrong way, angle bit out. Angle bit out, I think. Is it angle bit out? That looks like the angle bits to the back. The top ones, oh no, angle bits to the inside. Right, so that way. And that way. And then this piece. Ah. <laughs> this piece goes on about that. And then this piece goes on there. Right, so now we need one of those. And two of those. And right. let's un unzoom you. Let's unzoom. Right. That two of those. And all my. Do you know what? I'm going to stop caring about what screw goes where. They all look the same. Right, so then we get that one screw in the middle, talking to myself, like a loony. All right, I've already answered all the drone questions, which ones I've got. So no need to go over it again. I've got three DJIs, I've already answered which ones I've got. So I'm not going to keep saying over and over and over. Uh, so on the comments, I'm going to try and go for comments that I've not yet answered. You know, I know what happens quite often. People ask the same questions over and over. And sometimes it's because they joined the stream later and stuff. And sometimes it's just being annoying. The uh, person asking about the drones, he's obviously being annoying. <laughs> I've already answered it twice what drones I've got. I'm not answering it again. How's the boat rebuild going? Yeah, Max has got to rebuild it. Max broke it, Max has got to fix it. Uh, 
Alright, that one there. Alright, now we've got... We need these pieces. Right, so we need two more bearings. Right, two of those. You bend it, you bend it. That's it. Well, the thing is, how the rule normally goes, if you let someone have a go with something and they break it, then you're responsible. If they ask to have a go and they break it, they're responsible. That's normally how it goes. Uh, right, what goes where? These don't look like anything like that on there. Long wheel axle. Oh, so you've got option of two. You've got a long one and a short one. So what are we doing? Andy, long or short axles? <laughs> Greetings, Kev. How are you find wrenching on Tamiya's? Ha <laughs> yeah, good. Nice build, aren't they? When are you getting married? Ha! <laughs> Not any time soon. Ah, short. There we go. It says multi-rotor. All right, so we've got... Oh, hold on. I've only got a short anyway. Oh, no, hold on. Yeah, I've only got a short. Right, okay. Right, so we need two of these bearings, hub carriers A6. So A6 there, and another A6 here. I never thought I'd see Kev building a TTA one, neither did I. But Andy and some of the others at the club says I've got to do one, so um, yeah. yeah. Right, so that bearing in there and that in there, and I obviously don't want you to put that bearing in yet for some reason, don't know why. Right, that in there. Next up, we need B6. So this contraption. And we need three more of these screws. Randomly just get these in what, whatever box. You know what? I might as well just mix all these screws up. I just, it's just pointless looking through all these different pots when it's got the same screws in there. It just seems stupid, doesn't it? So all these pots with the same screws in there. And you keep looking through different pots every five seconds when there's all these... It's silly, isn't it? All right, that should make it easier now. Now we can just look through one pot of screws. Three of them. Right, we've got three of them. Mm -hmm. Then we need two counter sinks. So that one. That one and that one. Right, and then we get this. And that goes upside down. That goes on there. And the countersinks go here. Do you like armor attractors more, says Nicholas? Ah, uh, both. I'm not brand loyal. I'm loyal to a decent product. So, X Max is my favorite when it comes to off road. And the Infraction is my favorite when it comes to on road. So it depends on the product. I never care what brand something is. The brand does not bother me in the slightest. Could not care less. None of these brands pay me any money. I don't work for any of these brands. I don't own any of these brands. I don't owe these brands anything. Therefore, I do not care. When people fanboy over certain brands like phones, iPhone versus Apple and tractors versus armour, I could not care less. Couldn't care less. Depends how good the product is. UDR or Sledge, says Mid. They're completely different cars, so it depends what you want to do. If you want it to look realistic, UDR. If you want to bash, Sledge. Can you do a backflip? I can with an RC car. No, I can do it with his body. <laughs> Nicholas says, nice. Same with me. There you go. I don't really understand why people get fan loyal, a brand loyal, and get all, all funny over just sticking with one brand all the time. Don't really make sense to me, unless they've got shares in the company or something. It makes no sense, or they're sponsored. Right, next, we've got to attach... Well, these I'm going to put on later, these body mounts, because I know for a fact 
Those stupid things are going to get in the way while we're trying to build it. So I'm not going to put those on yet. They're going to go on later. All right, next up, we've got to put these on. So now we need these parts. So two more countersinks, smaller ones these time. So that one and that one. Then we need that and that. Two of those. And then the shorter ones, that and that. Two of those done. Cut the drive shafts. A couple of input cups, output cups even. Done. And it says on there to put grease on. I'm not going to bother. It's a bit controversial when it comes to putting grease on stuff because if it's somewhere that attracts dirt, then it can loads of stuff can stick to it and it ends up making it less free. So if you clean it all the time, well, every time you use it, you take it apart, clean it, put new grease on. Might be beneficial. However, I haven't got time for that. I just want to use it. So I don't bother greasing it. People try and argue with me. Ah! My answer is, it's only a toy. I'm not in it. It's not big business. I don't care. If it makes your hobby more fun to grease it, do it. If you can't be bothered, don't do it. So it look, moves free enough without grease, doesn't need it. Uh, that hasn't got any screws on it yet, so maybe that's for later. Right, see him again on that side. Matt says, hey from America, hello dude. Any more videos on eRevo 2.0? None planned. I'm not really a massive fan of it, really. So none planned. What truck are you making? This is a Tamiya TTO1. Oh, come on, get in the hole, damn it. That's what she said. What's the best crawler? Well, from what I've used, my favorite is TOX4, but as for best, I suppose it depends whichever one puts the biggest smile on your face. Right, that's that working. Then where'd those screws go? Those screws are ah, there for holding on. Well, I don't need those yet because they're for holding on the body posts and I'm not putting body posts on yet. Can we save them for later? All right, next up, chick away. What would you recommend for budget 150 mile an hour build? I don't know, Rilalo, whatever they're called, do they go that fast? All right, let's get a few comments and eat a few nuts. Comments and nuts for, for a minute. Comments and nuttage. I've got these roasted pistachios here. Get a few comments. It just started snowing for the first time in Utah. Whoa. No snow here yet in UK. We're still in t-shirt weather. Why are you bringing your monster truck to Isle of Man? I probably will do at some point. Raz did 170 with Rolalo. Whoa. We should do a pumpkin lunchbox stream away. So we're going to build a tummy beetle. Have you had a TTO2? Yes. The TTO2, what's the other Tamiya thing that we've done the YouTuber race with? How many people buy your raffle tickets? Oh, no set number, they're all different. Mojave 4S, yep, I might get one. How's house hunting going? I found one, just doing some legals. Why aren't you doing the build the faster way? <laughs> if you watch the main video, you'll see it the fast way. Don't eat the screws. <laughs> uh, 
Right, let's crack on. Let's crack on. What's your opinion on your six by six? Which one, dude? How many X Max gears, Kev? How many X Max gears sound stripped but on? What? How would my X Max gears sound stripped but on? It's probably not the gears, it's probably something else in there. What's your smallest quarter? I've got, a, I don't know where it is, but it's about that big. Tiny little thing. Right, let's crack on. Let's crack on. Right, arms. So B9, B10. It'd be nice if they actually wrote on the arm which is which, because once you've cut them off, you're going to forget, aren't you? It says it on here, 9 and 10. I'm going to write on the actual arm what it is, because otherwise I'm going to forget. Because they look the same. Nine, ten, nine, ten. The world's crappiest marker pen. Right, that there. Uh, next up, we've got to get these things in. You should get the track to track off on FTX. It's indestructible. Oh, well. Uh, someone says, um, cats love the car show mini. Hey. Yeah, one of my cats loves the RCs as well. Well, I wouldn't say love it, but it tolerates it. Put it that way. Supposed to go in there. Right. right in there. My cat chases my cheap RCs. Yeah, my cat chases the little ones for a little while, and then he gets bored and just doesn't care anymore. Levy says he'd love to build a car, but he'd mess it up. Oh, give it a go, dude. It's all part of the hobby. I mean, ready to run's good, get it out of the box and rip. But building it, it's just sort of fun, isn't it? How many cats do you have? We got two. Are you moving, Oh, man? Yes, I am. Right, there we're in. Next, we've got to build another diff, and I've already done that earlier. Right. So, we need that. Two bearings. That and that. And some space, I think. P3. And where's P3? Where's P parts? This is D. This. P. Right, here's P. And three is there. All right. So we've got bearing first. Then spacer, then another bearing, and then Mr. Bevel. Boom. Then diff. Now you want to make sure that it goes the same way. So you want to turn it 
going to turn that and make sure that it turns the same that side. Because if you put this in the wrong way around, it might not even go, no, it won't even go in the wrong way around. Look, but on some cars, it will go in the wrong way around, and then you'll have one wheel go that way and the other that way. It's quite funny. Exo Cage done it with his Raminator recently. Right, that in there. Next up, we got B arms. Oh, they are different because the B arms, the B tens. They've got this thing sticking out for the shock. The other one hasn't, so I didn't actually have to mark it. Better safe than sorry, though. Then next, we need another diff cover. A9. Oh, we're nearly there yet, says Ross. <laughs> I wish. Taking a bit longer than I hoped. Oh, damn it. Like that there. And then these go like that, I believe. And then we got that thing, which is A5. Where's the A parts gone? A5, and we also need this bit, A10. Right, like that. And there. That on there, that on there. And then we need the same screws again. Two long ones. And a medium one. Probably that. One of them, two of them. Right, boom. Bosh. Nick Ferrari says, my wife Beverly says hi. Hello, Beverly. Kevin, please see your cats. Oh, I can't in the shop. They're at home. Expecting a boom moment. <laughs> I, I tried. The boom's not working today. I don't know why. When you fly in your jet plane. I don't know. No, no set date yet. Got to get it working first. I've ordered a gyro for it and a power box. No idea what a power box is, but my mate Steve said I need one, so I bought one. Right, that on. How's the flying lessons going? Good, I've had five hours so far. I've done a few takeoffs, done a few landings. And I'm quite good with the hands-on stuff, but not so good with the theory stuff. All right, hold on, got snot. Uh, right, where was we? Right, that's the one. Now we need another one of these covers. That on there. Couple of small counter sinks. Right there, right there. Oh, a couple of medium counter sinks. Medium counter sinks, where are you? There and there. Three normal size screws. If you do ever get that stunt plane, please be careful. <laughs> yeah, I'll be careful. I mean, I'll make sure I do all the stunts high up, but I'll be looking for a stunt plane soon. I'm gonna get this house paid for in the Isle of Man. 
see how much I owe in taxes here. And hopefully got enough left over to get us done playing. Hopefully. Me to you two or I'm limitless. Um I yeah, for speed running I'd say the VTE2. I see a bit more beefily made and I haven't got that diff kick up. That diff kick up for speed runs is a proper pain in the butt. And all the bearings are small. So the VTE2 seems a lot tougher build quality. However, for street bashing, you can't beat an infraction. Of course, only my opinion. Everyone can have their opinion too. How much RPM that solid wheel from infraction take? Oh, I don't think much. It's so heavy. No one's getting VTE too soon. Wee, really? nice dude. Is that ready for Rossa next year? No, boom, don't work live. I tried it. Too many hobbies can be frustrating. No, I like having lots of hobbies. It keeps it interesting. No, I like it. Never a dull day. If you get... If you can't be bothered on one, like on the monster truck, if I can't be bothered to wrench on it, I'll just do this. Oh, I, I love it. I'll never get bored of having lots of hobbies. You get a bit overwhelming sometimes. Must say. All right, so next we need that. That. And that. And that. Four normal, four normal screws. I call the normal screws these ones that are like literally 90% of Tamiya screws. Just normal generic Tamiya screws. So that's the ones I call normal screws. And then we've got two short counter sinks. There. And then two bearings. And two of these. That on there. That on there. Oh, missed a step there, look. guys say what you guys been up to today let me know what you guys have been up to best rc car content on youtube says weird kid hey thanks dude hey blue raiders his first live stream welcome dude thanks for stepping by right and then that goes in there with shaftage these are such a basic build i mean this looks like toy grade. It's actually toy grade build quality. It looks like a Nico. Test week next week. Maybe. Maybe. All right, that on there. So then next. We've got A1 we need. Right, A1. A1? Where's A1? A1 there. So we need two of these. Actually, four of those. And then we need those that go through there and through there. I could use the electric one here, but this would be bad if I stripped it out and also if I over tightened it. Are you going to do your own take on the Monster Beetle? Yeah, that's the plan, dude. Jason races them in the States. Yeah, 
Toon says he laughed his ass off at the last video with Stemp in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Mechanic D says, no, that's wrong. Use a hammer. There's always that, dude. There's always that. Well, he says, your channel's what got me into RC. Way, that's good to hear. Hope you're enjoying the hobby. I'll tell you what. There's so many people that struggle to find friends and things and they're lonely. Hey, just get into RC and you'll just have so many friends. You know, do some little online bash groups. And then go out and meet in person or go to racing clubs. If you're a decent person that's nice to others, you will be welcomed in the hobby. Unfortunately, the hobby does have a very small minority of total douchebags that are not welcome in the hobby like at all that ruin it for everyone else but that's the same in everything in life you get a few idiots that ruin it for everyone else well right, i don't know what these countersinks are for oh yeah countersinks are to hold the body posts on so we're not going to bother with those yet that's going to be a last minute job the body posts could you just get in the way all right next page shocks and luckily we haven't got oh look we're actually getting there look we, we get in there pretty well. Shock wires. We don't need to build them. If we... Because we're using these, yeah, racing shocks. Are they actually for Tamiya or...? It just, it's just for temp scale touring car. Alright, so it does come with all these little balls here. So they could be handy. It comes with different pistons. Andy told me to change pistons and things, but I can't be asked for that. I wonder, have these got oil in them? Andy, if you're still there, do these come with oil already in them, or have you got to put oil in? I'm guessing it's already got oil in there. Oil not included. Oh. Have a look in there. Ah, there's no oil in there. Well, Andy says he put the free hole pit. I can't be bothered with that. I'm not changing pistons. All right. Well, it does say 450 CST. So, hold on, back in a minute. Just got to find some shock oil. Five hundred, that'll do. Got five hundred. That will do. Oh, he says forty weight. I got this five hundred to put in there, Andy. I can't. I can't imagine it making much difference, can it? I'm not. I'm not in the mood for doing it all properly. But not doing shocks. Right, let's Top these up. Up here, I've got this little tool stand. So I put the shocks on there. Take these out. Because then all the oil can bleed out, all the, all the air bubbles can come out. Alright, there's going to be a slight little bit of long windedness going on now. So I'll put you back down here again so you can see what's going on here. Get all the lids off of these. <laughs> now I says shock's my least favourite bits. Yeah, anything that's messy with fluid and stuff I mean if you're a professional you'd probably take the springs off can't be bothered sharp bits on the end <laughs> oh hiccups I 
Is there any shock oil in the kit? No. Shock oil not included. These the air racing ones, they look really well made shocks actually. They look nice. Isn't that nice? So you put the oil in. And then you give it a couple of pumps. And then what that does, it gets the air bubbles out from under the piston. And then I put them up here just to chill for a minute. Just so that the air can bleed out. I'm not going to, you could wait. If you're really fussy, you could wait an hour for all the, all the air bubbles to fully come out. But I don't care, I'm not in it, am I? Not in the damn thing. I have hiccups too. <laughs> I normally only have one hiccup and that's it. Some people hate hiccups, but I don't know, I think they're quite fun. <laughs> I don't mind them. Kev, okay, are you going to do a review on Raptor R? What's the Raptor R? <laughs> I love sneezing. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to like sneezing. Not too much, though. Once or twice is all right. Not if you can't stop. All right, so now... I don't really know what the full bleeding procedure is. They're all a bit different, all right. Cycle shot cut up and down, we've done that. Install bladder slowly at an angle. Then put lid on, right. So, we get the bladder, which is in there. Here's a bit where it gets messy. You should really take the springs off. I can't be bothered. The ladder on top this is where it leaks out a little bit. And then it says to put on the lid. The new Traxxas Raptor. Oh, is that, is that based on a slash? I haven't planned on getting it, but maybe. Boom, that's that one done. And it feels nice. Feels lovely. What's the biggest amount of money you have ever spent on one video? Oh, gold, I don't know. <laughs> what, is, is building the monster truck, does that include? I, I, I don't know, what do you include? Is buying the Lambo, does that include? Or do you mean an RC video? It was our vid RC video, probably the speed car, probably cost about 10 grand to build, probably. Graminator was over 10 grand, I think, the big one, the one with the ATCC engine in it. I think Monster Truck does include. All right, Monster Truck then, probably. <laughs> Are you guys with OCD, does it bother you that I'm putting a different cap onto a different shock? I'm just curious, you know, does does the cap have to go back onto the shock it came off of originally or does it not matter? I think everyone's got OCD to some extent, some more than others. I mean, my OCD, for example, is like on the monster truck, when I put the bolts in for the shocks, they've all got to go in the same way. You can't have three, three bolts going one way and then one bolt, bolt going the other way. That, to me, gets my OCD going. But with these lids, so uh, that, that doesn't bother me. I, I can mix and match them. I don't care. It doesn't matter if it fits, it fits. <laughs> if it doesn't leak, it's all good. Yep, that's what I say. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. 
Why don't you use leaf net pools to fish out your butt? Oh, dude, it's so deep and you can't see to the bottom of it. And we tried. It's just in that river where we go, it's so dirty. Anything that goes in there is gone. You're not finding it. I mean, anything that's an inch below the surface of the water, you can't see it. My OCD is making sure there's absolutely no air in the shocks when building a shark. <laughs> yeah, there must be a little bit of air in there, but not too much. I'll get some brake cleaner out on those in a minute and make sure all the oil's off of there. Hey, uh, T25 says, loving the recent videos. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. The thing is, sometimes I've spent so much time getting all the air out for like a couple of weeks later for a bit of air to get in there anyway. You're spending all that time making it perfect for it to be in a couple of weeks not perfect anyway. So, you know, if you're a hardcore racer and you build your shocks like a, a day before the event or something, I'll get it, I guess. But not for me. I don't care. I'm not in it, am I? Even with a monster truck where I am in it, I still don't care really if there's any bit of air in there. I mean, does it really matter? The shocks will still work with air in them. Yeah, they'll still work. You might lose a little bit of damping, I suppose. But in a toy. Does it matter? What are your thoughts on Traxxas Hoss? Yeah, I love it, dude. Trick shot, shot says he loves all the videos. Hey, thanks, dude. You and Stem B should try magnet fishing. Might find the boats. <laughs> we did try. We did try magnet fishing and nothing came back. All right, one more. Then we can clean them and put them on. What genre of music do you like? I quite like 70s and 80s music. I cannot stand rap music. Rap music to me is the worst. However, that Stan, that Dido and, and whoever it was that done that one, I, I like that one. That's a good one. But overall, I'm not, not a fan of rap. What do you think of the UFO topic? Oh, I don't get involved with stuff like that. I couldn't care less. Mainstream media, I do not care. Just could not care less. Everything I tell you on there is just one big lie for the most part. I'm sure there's a few true bits on there, but anything important is just a lie. And I've got zero interest in watching it. It's not interested, don't care, don't want to know. Not bothered, don't watch it. Eminem, that's it. Eminem and Dido. I like that song. That was a good one. But, you know, there's a lot of genres of music that I'm not a fan of, but there's the odd song in there that I really like. My favourite is 80s Sign Synthwave. <laughs> right, that's all the shocks built. Now I'm going to go and get the brake cleaner. Somewhere next door. Actually, forget brake cleaner, we use baby wipes. Kind of on the old skin. Brake cleaner is not very good for the for the skin. Gaza goes, good evening, Kevin, everyone else. Good evening, Mr. Gaza. What's up, Kev? Says, says David. What's up, dude? When did the video about the E-Revo 2.0 come out? Oh, long time ago, dude. If you go back on the main channel, you'll see some videos of it. Preach on, brother Kev. <laughs> I'm sure there are. A UFO is just an unidentified flying object. So if you don't know what it is, it's a UFO. All the crap they've gone about on the news could not care any less. 
I just can't believe how some people can believe what they read on the news. I just, I just can't believe it. Can't get my head around it. It's so obviously a lie. That people lap it all up, they swallow it all, they go with it all. I've, I've lost faith in a lot of humanity, actually, that people believe this nonsense. More Isle of Man content. It says the real Cletus. Yeah, there will be when I go there. Right, next up, we've got to find what screws to use to attach the shock. So, they're using these little things here. And that, right, Andy, if you're in the house, what screws do you use for putting the shocks on? Because stock Tamiya ones are a no-go. And we do get, in the bag, you get all these ball link things. So, that's got a thread in it. That's got a hole in it. So, it should come with them, says Andy. Oh, really? No, it doesn't. No, we got, we got the springs. We've got the pistons. And... What, do you use these? Is that what you use? Just screw that straight in? Will that go in? All right, cool. Well, that'll go in. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, cool. That makes it easy. It comes with a lot of different options there. All right. So. You go in a hole or out a hole, Andy. On the top here, look, we've got option of here or here. In a hole, right. Thanks, Andy. Like that there. Is it in a hole front and rear, Andy? Hey, Lewis in the house. How you doing, mate? You haven't been out in a while. How long are you live for? Got to nip out. Eh, probably not massively longer. Maybe another hour-ish, maybe. Let's see how we get on. It'd be nice to get the wheels on there and get the most of it done. I've got a big plane, but not that big, damn. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're fairly big, but there's bigger out there. It's nowhere near the world's biggest, but they are big. Do you still have the XR, XLT? Oh, what's the XLT? XRT I've got. XLT. Oh, the XLT. Yeah, I've got that as well. Yeah, the petrol one. Yeah, I've got that. Kev, when do you go driving the FG cars? I'm looking for a Beetle body and a Beetle tub. Brand new, or at least in good condition, like, like new condition, like new condition, at least for the body. What are you using for oil? I've got this um, 500 CST Schumacher oil, or Core RC oil. Yeah, basically well, make some great stuff, nice shocks. Them if you tune them. Hey. Can you show me the brand of earplugs you use for diffs? I haven't got the wrapper anymore, but it's the pink ones. Well, any brand doesn't really matter. I use the pink ones. I forgot what brand they are. All right, so now we should be able to pop them on. Cough, they're tight. That's what she said.
Oh, Jesus, why are they so tight? I don't want to break it. More drift cars. Yeah, I should hopefully get some Yokomo drift cars coming. I said they're going to send some over at some point. Right, that. God, that is tighter than a duck's ass. That's watertight. How's the truck coming along? What, the monster truck? I've got to do a bit, little, little bit of work on it. I've got a new steering system to put on it. Couple of repair jobs. Should really get on that soon. But I've got all the plane stuff in the way at the minute, so I've got to get that out of the way tomorrow. And hopefully make a start on the monster. <sighs> do you still have the Armour Faction Mega? I'll do. That's on. Oh, look at that. Moves lovely. Lovely, jubbly. Those shocks aren't coming off, no. Not the right tool for the job, really, but I don't really know what the right tool is. I mean, normally, normally you can just pop them on my fingers, but if I do that, I'll probably end up breaking the, the plastic arm or my finger. Are you planning to race that truck? Yes! Come on, on you get, come on. All right, we're on. Boom! Do you know what? A really budget crappy looking car. You put some decent shocks on it and it looks half decent. Right, next little tidy up. So we're getting a bit messy. Every now and then you do have to go around and just tidy everything up because it gets to the point. We've got so much junk everywhere that you start losing track of where everything is. And then it takes even longer to build stuff. When you might as well spend about 30 seconds just putting a few tools back. Definitely the ones that you don't need anymore. I know we need that. I know we need that. I don't think we need those anymore. All right. Clean workspace, clean mind. Do you still have the 5T? Yes. And the 30 degree north. Right, next up we've got to do uh, this, this here, the linkage system. So we need B1. Where's the oil gone? There, put it back on the oil. So B1. I'm glad we didn't have to build these. Oh, actually, Tamiya shocks are easy to build. If they were oil filled, they would have been a bit long winded. Ah, right, B1, where's B1? B1 there. B1, B1, and my northern accent. How's my northern? Is there any northerners in the house? How's my northern? I'm not doing it right today. I'm a northerner. Right, and then we need D3, which is here. <laughs> Fishing Dorset Life says he likes the last boat video. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah, we always have a laugh with the boats and stem pee, every time. That. That. And then screw-wise, we need MB2, two of those. 
two of those. Uh, what else do we need? I think that's it, isn't it? Bearings, A2. So I think... Oh, so these bearing kits from SC Models even include steering ball bearing. That's nice. When are you doing the durability test on the Hilux? Are we going to start filming on that soon? But when the video's out, I don't know. Because it might break instantly and we've got to fix it. And I'm not going to release the video until I'm happy with the video. So we're going to start filming soon. But when the video's ready, who knows? All right, dot like that. Dot there, dot there. That. Goes on there. When will you fly that beautiful beast? I don't know. I need to get a receiver for it. That Andy from Redfin's getting me. And then hopefully Jason from Redfin. And hopefully Andy's going to help me put it together. Put all the stuff in it. And then I've got to find somewhere to fly it. Because the, the club that I'm a member of at the moment... They got funny with me there, so I'm not allowed to YouTube there. I don't even know how it goes. They go all seriously over a grass field that barely anyone ever even goes to. And every time I went there, it's literally me and my friend. And they're still getting funny. And then they wonder why they can't get members. No, I want to go to a fun club. I can't be asked with all that stupidity or fully grown adults behaving like children, making out that these toys are like big business. Absolutely hate all that nonsense. I don't want to be any part of it. All right, so I think we put these to the side for a minute because they, I think they're coming up again there. Next up, we've got to put the foam bumper on. So that goes there. And then we got this little thing here, which is D4. Which is that. funny thing is, when I'm learning to fly real planes, they're all chilled out and have fun and they're a great laugh and don't take it too seriously. I mean, obviously, safety you've got to take seriously, but, you know, you get what I mean. And then you go to a toy flying club and they're all, well, not all of them, you know, a lot of great guys there. But you get a few there that just try and turn it into something, this big business and it's not a toy plane, it's a real aircraft, but a miniature model. It's a stew one, man, it's a toy. If you play with it and it's got no practical purpose, it's a toy. How big is your monster truck wheels and tyres? The tyres are 66 inches tall. Right, that's on. Right, free enough. Next up, we've got to put, right, we've got to turn that round. We've got these little spacers here. So that looks like that and that. All right, so we've got that, 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 that. And then there's some little grub screws, like some long grub screws somewhere. So there. There, yep, and then we've got more of these funny shoulder screws, two of those. And then, that there. Oh, actually, hold on, sorry. I'll put that in first. It goes in with five millimetres still sticking out. Get our vernier, shove him on five mil ish. Near enough, not in it. Is that the screwdriver we used to build the manta ray? Yes, it, that one there is. more. 
think it matters that much if you bang on or not, because this thing is screwed on top anyway by the looks of it. I think, does it? Does that screw on there? Yeah, that screws on there. It can't matter that much, can it? Who's your favourite YouTuber? Uh, V2 Vids. But he hasn't really made any, any videos recently. bit too much. That'll do. That'll do, not in it. Are you racing this dude? Alex C, Stig Mechanic. Yes, Alex. Stig Mechanic is needed. Definitely need the Stig Mechanic. I'm, I might even race it on Monday. If you're up for coming down. Right, now, that one can go on there. And that one can go on there, sweet. And then these screws in there. Do you watch your own videos sometimes? Well, when I edit them, obviously, and then when I finished editing it, I watched the whole video again to make sure that I've done it right and it, it all works properly and it's uploaded right. And then I do watch a few older ones to get some, just for memories and stuff. Can you do video on the tracks pre-runner? Maybe. Right, smooth-ish. Smoothish, smooth enough, not in it. Right, and then why does it tell you to charge the battery? We're not ready yet. Maybe it's just to get the battery ready so you can play sooner. Right, anyway, next page. Controller. Right, servo. So I've got a JX Eco Boost. I'm gonna put a link in the description if I remember. I mean, these were my go-to servo for a very long while, and then recently. A few of them have become unreliable, but crazy fast servo. Good enough, even in a high-end racer. Some of the guys down the club, even that win a lot. I mean, Ewan that races down there, I think he's got one of them in his buggy. So one of the best servos for the price sees, absolutely love them. I've learnt my lesson though, I'm not putting a servo saver on it. Because it's just asking for trouble. Uh, I know last time I used a servo save, I kept not centering up. Uh, right, let's see if we can put it together without a servo saver. So we've got D7. Are you gonna make it AS? No, not this one. This one's going to be just for racing at the local club. Right, so we've got that. And then we've got this little thing here, which is P6. So that'll be on the servo saver assembly itself. I really don't want to use the servo saver. We've got one of these. Let go. From there to there. Really do not want to use a servo saver. You tell me servo savers, they just don't send them up nice. And then every time you go down the straight, it's like your tracking's out, your trim. Do you have a large opinion? They're usually undergeared. I don't, Alex. I don't think, I don't know, I might have actually. I don't know if we're allowed to change the opinion. If Andy's in the comments, are we allowed to change the opinion, Andy, in the, in the club rules? Right. Oh, I really don't want to use this servo saver. I really don't. But I just want to line it all up in there and see how it all sits. 
So that goes, does that go on there? Right, I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit here now. Cause I wanna see if we can make it work without a servo saver. Oh, so Andy says, yes, you can change opinion. So what opinion do you lot all use, Andy? Alex goes motor upside down. Oh, I'm not changing it now. <laughs> I'm not turning that round. <laughs> we all use stock pinion. Oh, that's cool then. If everyone uses stock pinion, it will be fair game. All right, that there, that there. Is Armour a good brand? Yes. One of the best basher brands out there, in fact. Right, that there. And then we need the servo posts, which are A4. So one's already fallen off, the other one's there. Where did you buy that model from? This one come from Redfin Models. Ah. So we got those, and then we need screw wires. We need MC2. MC2, they've got a little shoulder thing on them. So where are they hiding? I don't know where those screws are hiding. I haven't got those screws, what? Oh. Does it not come with those screws? Anybody know in the comments? The screws that you hold. The servo, the servo posts on with. The picture there shows the countersink, but it's got like a built-in washer. Oh, here it is, there's one. And there's the other one, right, got it, got it. Panic over. What is a servo saver? So a servo saver's got a spring inside it. So on the servo, you put an arm that moves. If you put a solid arm on there and you crash, what can happen? The shock of it could damage the servo or, or break the car. So the servo saver has got a spring inside it, so it's got some give. So that way when you crash, it's got a bit of give in there and it saves everything. However, these Tamiya ones, that's a spring there. They never centre up, it always goes one way or the other. So you, you're constantly messing about with your trim trying to make it go straight. And last time, when we raced these similar things, the Tamiya YouTuber race, I came last partially of the steering or oh, the faulty servo and the servo saver that was sticking all right so that goes there that goes there uh. yeah, stock servo saver kind of goes in on itself. Hmm. I might have to move the servo back. Alex goes metal servo horn. Yeah, I think I will put a metal one on there. I just want to see if I can space it. I might have to move the servo back to make it work. So yeah, it's plenty of space there, so we could. Ah, we've only got to come back a little bit though. So maybe we've got to drill new holes in the chassis. Right. So right, what comes with it, servo saver wise? Only plastic ones. That's a plastic servo horn. 
Eh. Maybe. With that screw in there. Ah, no. It will screw in that way, though. Ah. Might work. Might work. Might work. We've got to screw it in there, but it's, it'd be nice if it was a bit thicker plastic. Right, so we want it, I want to make it the same spacing as a stock. So that puts it into talking to myself. Don't worry. Kev, budget $500, what should I get? I would get the associated MT10. Alright, we'll go with that. Go with that hole there. Hopefully, hopefully we can screw that into that hole. Yeah, it's gonna need opening out a little bit. Might not work. Might have to put something else behind it just to bite into itself. Go. All right, we're going in. All right, it's tightened up quite tight, so I think it might be all right. So servo, we need to get straight. So I've got a servo tester. Plug him in there. Then you plug the servo in the other end. And that, you can get these on Banggood actually, and any model shop really should have these. And you can make sure the servo works. If you hit that and put it in centre, that puts the servo in neutral. Right, so now, go ahead and put that servo arm on there in the central, or as central as possible. And then we've got to get a screw to hold the servo on. Not watching the rugby final, no. Didn't even know it was on. I don't watch TV, dude. I don't watch TV. Not into all that. Not into mainstream sports and mainstream TV and mainstream media. Anything mainstream, I'm just not no interest, really. Right, so we can plug in now. Is that the TTO2? No, this one's TTO1. Right, so now... That in, that in. So for that, we need the countersinks. I'm losing interest now. As you can see, I can't be bothered picking the right screws anymore. I'm just picking out what looks like it's going to go. That in there. That in there, right, that's that in. Is it a bad idea to buy a used RC? Not always, if you know what you're looking for, sometimes you get a really good deal. However, if you don't know what you're looking for, you could end up buying complete junk. So, depends. I always prefer to buy new if I can, unless you're getting a blinding deal. 
Like that jet that I bought, for example, I probably saved half the money on buying it used and it's not even been flown yet. So when you can get a good deal, definitely go for the good deal. Right. That moves perfect. Right. Uh, so now we need receiver in there and speed controller. So receiver-wise, I'm using a Noble. Flaskar Noble, if I can find it somewhere. Where's it gone? What? Where'd that go? Oh, God, I had, I had the receiver sat there a minute ago. What? The I literally put the receiver and all the electrics here. I don't know where it's gone. What? Oh man. Oh, it's here. Idiot. All right, so we can have receiver one side, ESC the other. I don't know which way is best. Where's the aerial come out? Aerial comes out on the top deck. Kev, can you do more crawling content, please? Oh, sometimes. I don't know when. I will do more. When I go to the Isle of Man, they do quite a lot of crawling there, so I'll probably do quite a bit of crawling there, I would imagine. All right, so if that's where the aerial goes, I think we should have the receiver there, that way around. All right, that's that sorted. And then this, we've got the motor wires that side. So I might even direct hold of that. Not now though. Yeah, we can have direct hold of that. That'll go there. That can go there. Right, cool. Right. Ah, let's go and get the brake cleaner. Right, how long have we been going for on this stream? 128 minutes. So we've been a bit of waffling as well. So probably two hours into the build. So you guys have said two hours to build it. Not too far off. It's done for the most part, really. A few little bits to finish it off. But the main build, yeah. All right. Still got silicon grease on my fingers. Brake clean is not good to get on your fingers, but neither the silicon grease when you're trying to stick stuff to stuff. Right, so receiver. Did you have problems with the armor senton? Uh, I can't remember. I think we sent it to the moon completely once and it started getting tight, but not really, a really good car that is. Can't go wrong with the Senton. Right, put, chill that on there again for a minute. <laughs> is it funny, fully grown man playing with his toys? <laughs> I am such a, sometimes people call me a man child as an insult. But I call myself a man-child. I know I'm a man-child. Right, so where that goes, it's got a little raised... This is stupid. Why have Tamiya raised a bit of plastic just there? Just so that you can't stick stuff down properly. So I was going to... Just cut the corner of this tape off so that, that raised bit doesn't have to sit on it. Right. Yeah, 
<laughs> Funnier than 900 people watching you play with your toys. <laughs> All right. That uh, in there. Boom. Ah, damn. Should have put it back a bit more. Too late. Too late. Don't matter. It's in. All right. That's that in. I don't know if I should wire it all up on camera. I'll probably do that at the end, wire it all up. Because I could do that off camera then for you lot. Well, I might do another live stream tomorrow. We'll see. See how we get on. All right. Next up. Look at all these screws. I'm not even going to bother pulling them out now. I'm just going to pull them out as we go along. So we've got D3 that we need. That's for the aerial. But do you know what? I might not even bother putting the aerial there. We're not going to drive that far. I could just tie the aerial up in a thing, couldn't I? Nah, I won't bother with that. We won't need the aerial. Uh, if you're going longer distance, you can. Right, that one there. Then we've got MA2. Yes. And that, and that's going there and there. All right. Let's get this thing done. That on there. We've got MA1, which is that longer. Why has that got longer there? It's going into like the same. Hmm. Oh, that's what it says. That's what it says. So whenever I do stuff up with the ugly dagger, I always do the last little bit by hand, because otherwise you run the risk of stripping stuff. All right, and then we need M3 by 15, so that is, is it that? Yep, two of those. Kev, do you enjoy micro rock crawlers? Yeah, I love me little mini crawlers. I don't get much chance to really use them, though. Plus, price of build complete RTR. I don't know. You guys work it out. How much complete build? Probably a couple hundred dollars, probably all in, roughly. If you put longer in place, it locks the gearbox. Ah, right, I'm with you. Right. And next we got MC1, which are shorter ones. Oh, they're really short, the MC ones. I think the MC2 are the normal sort of ones. That one and that one. Yeah, we don't want to be locking any gearboxes up. That's bad. Nothing better than watching Kevin on my birthday. Hey, happy birthday, C. White. Kevin, is it your birthday? No, it's not my birthday. Have you tried Traxxas and Traxxas yet? I haven't actually, no. Right, so that's that all done. That's that all done. I'm bound to have missed something. There's a motor cover that goes on there. I'm not going to bother with that. I think it's better to let the motor breathe. All right, next up, we've got to glue the tyres. Right, we'll do that in a minute. So now we need hexes. Right, uh, Mr. Andy, what hexes do we use? It's got an option here of loads of different hexes. 
If Andy's in the house, which ones? We've got really wide and really narrow. So what goes on there? Anybody know? I'm guessing probably narrow. Let's do narrow. I don't know if Andy's still in the house, but we're going narrow. I think if you've got the wide, you probably have to put on the wider axles itself. Right, so we've got that. And then bearings. So we've got to put a bearing in each one of these, look. Bung them in now. I always get it like this when I'm doing a build. I start off doing it by the book, and at the end I'm just losing interest and just, just donking bits where it looks like they're supposed to go. All right, so we've got those there. Then we need a pin for these. Got to be careful with these when the wheels are off because the hexes fall off. A lot of RCs, the hexes are held on, but not on the Tamiya. Not on this one anyway. That's on. Well, right, that's going to be on wheels in a, minute, on, in a minute. And I think we'll leave the soldering and the body. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll do the, we'll do the body in a separate live stream. Maybe tomorrow if we get a time, chance to do it. And then while the paint's drying on the body, we can be doing the soldering. We do the shell orange. I oh, know, I'm thinking red. Game over red. What are you guys thinking? It doesn't have to be red though. I might do it yellow. I don't know. What colour do you guys reckon? My nan has a Tummy Amount of a Classic. Whee! People say red. Go on, name some colours in the comments. What colour do you reckon we should do it? Right, so that's that on. So now we need to put the tyres on. So let's get all this junk out of the way. People saying red, blue, yellow. Do it GT40 colours. Oh, I'll tell you what, if Andy can paint it, Andy likes painting things, we'll give it a snazzy colour scheme. All right, so we have to use the stock tyres. And they do not look like they're going to handle good at all. Sand brown with flames, light blue and orange, purple. Yeah, all the colours there. I'm thinking red or yellow. Green and black. Yeah, no, those tyres are rubbish. <laughs> the thing is though, if everybody has the same tyres, it's fair. At least the same offset, really. I know you've got front and rear, got a different design. I think they're the same offset. How many hours did it take you to build a RC car in total? I don't know. I mean, I'd say on average a whole lot. Probably about eight hours, maybe. But this was nowhere near that long. I mean, I've been taking me time, haven't I? So I reckon if I really rushed it, I could probably do it in two hours, the whole thing, but minus the body. So Andy said, you should really degrease the rubber, but I can't be bothered. I don't think there's enough power for it to matter. So Andy said they put two foams inside there to make it a bit stiffer. Yeah, I suppose it took, I've done the main build. Look, the main build's done really, isn't it? Just got to solder it up a little bit here. I could just plug it in and go, but I want to solder it to make it a little bit less cumbersome. 
So, yeah, probably a couple of hours ish. Alex goes, put a rear buggy enter in the front tyres. I probably could do, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with these because that's what everybody else is doing, and they, they might say that I'm cheating. <laughs> so I think I'll just do it, do it how all the other lads at the club are doing it, just to keep it fair. I mean, your way is probably better, but if I do, especially if I do it on a live stream, they're gonna see, aren't they? They're gonna say, "No, you cheated because you put in a racing foam or something." But that's all right. That's all right. How did I tight to do the screws? Oh, dude, when I built my first manta ray, I stripped most of them. So, you shouldn't do them too tight at all, really. But you get a feel for it. Just do it up with, a, you know, do it up by hand. Once you, once you kind of feel that it gets tight on the end, that's about it. No need to force it. Someone go, I don't think you'd fit a buggy insert in that little tyre. Hmm, maybe, I don't know, God knows. I mean, sponge is flexy, isn't it? So. <laughs> Lee says, Tomley and Gav will cheat. Yeah, you know they will. They're going to find some unfair disadvantage somewhere. They're going to put silicon ear plugs in the diffs. They're probably going to modify it so it steers more. God knows what else they're going to do, but they're definitely going to do some cheat. <laughs> What's the worst RC car you've ever had, says Magic Michael? That would be the Thunder Tiger EK4. And I've got three of them. I do like them, they're just crap. <laughs> Someone goes murdered out, black everywhere, or game over red with white stripes. Right, that's that one in. My Lossy Baja Raids tends to talk to us sometimes. Yeah, mine does as well. All right, that's that. A bit long-winded here now. GT40 colours with orange stripe. Yeah, that would look good, man. GT40 colours. I like the idea of that. That's, that's not a bad shout. I'll have a look upstairs to see what colours i got. I mean, on the box, it's white. It does look good. It's got loads of stickers. So, I, I don't know. What is your worst RC building experience? Oh, I don't know, actually. Uh, I don't know. How long is your sausage? I uh, don't know. That long. <laughs> the speed sausage is, is uh, just over a metre long, I think. Try a colour you haven't used before. White with Game Over stickers. Yeah, maybe. Do you watch Vice Grip Garage? No, but I did watch the one where he drove V2 Vids Monster Truck. Is that a snowboard? Yes, the off-road sausage has a snowboard as a chassis. All right, I'm just trying to... This one's got a crease in it, look. I'm just trying to get that crease out. The other one's been in quite nice, but that one, for some reason, is getting a bit, a bit creased up. Don't really care that much, but... Right there, nice, lovely. Got rid of it now. Lovely, Ghibli. This body will take a weekend alone. No way am I spending a weekend on it, dude. No way. Don't have that much time. <laughs> I 
so many other projects and things to get on with. Do not have a time to spend the whole weekend on one body. I'd rather pay someone else to do it if it really took that long. <laughs> Are you going to do any upgrades during the build? Well, on this, it's already done, dude. The only upgrade was ball bearings, air racing shocks, and foam in the tyres. I think that's the only upgrades we're allowed, I believe. Hey, Grits the Blah Blah. Butchered your name, says, first time watching the stream. Hey, welcome, dude. Alfie says, like the video. Yeah, come on, everyone. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up, E. We've got 972 people in the stream. And we've got 882 thumbs up. So come on, let's see. Let's see if we can get a 1,000 thumbs up. Just, just because the more thumbs up you got, the more YouTube pushed the video. I never ask for likes, like ever, only when people remind me. I'll tell people to subscribe. I do say that sometimes. Come on, subscribe. I'll never really say to people who like the video. Does liking really make much difference? I don't even know how many likes my video get. People used to give me dislikes as a punishment, but I don't even care about dislikes or likes. I don't. I don't. I don't really care. But do do likes and dislikes? You know, I've been told that likes and dislikes do help push the video in the algorithm a little bit more. But I don't know. Do they really help? What's everyone just saying it? Hey, 1,004 thumbs up. So there we go. Do you still have MGT Nitro? Oh, which one's the MGT Nitro? I can't remember what one that is. All right, that's the tyres on. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on there. I'm not going to go too mad, though. But I am going to put these on because my friend Craig... Got it in his eyes and sealed it shut and then he had to go to hospital to have it forced open. Hey, Mark says first time live too. Welcome, dude. Welcome to the stream. going on here nothing's coming out oh nothing's coming out huh? which is the best in RCR Nitro you've tested I think my favourite has got to be the Savage it's not a very refined product it's got lots of problems but once you've sorted out a few little niggles I really like it. Oh, is this coming out in the wrong place? Ah, that spout. Right. Sod the spout. Oh, it needs it needs the spout. It's gonna make a mess otherwise, isn't it? That's a job I don't like doing, super gluing. Never have liked it. I don't think it needs much glue on there, really. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go too overboard. Get, get a little bit on there. Bother to do it properly. It's not got enough power for it to matter, has it? As long as it don't fall off. <laughs> you lot probably watching and laughing at my abysmal tire gluing techniques. Is the truck brushless? No, we brushed on this one, dude. We're doing it so everyone's. Everyone's got the same, same stuff pretty much. 
just to keep the racing fair. So, you know, really cheap racing, fun. A lot of people that do this truck racing say that it's the most fun that they've had with racing in a long while. And um, that is what RC is all about, having fun. So if you can have lots of fun on, on the cheap, why not? If you can have a lot of fun and spend less money, that's definitely a bonus. Often, the more money you spend on this hobby, the less fun it is. I definitely noticed that when I used to fly a lot of RC helis. You get an expensive heli that costs like three grand to build. And if you just got a normal job going on, that could be like a whole month of your, of your salary. Or like, you know, maybe two months even for some people. And then, you know, if you crash that, that's so much work, hours gone into into saving up for it. It's 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 bad, isn't it? And then you, you can't really enjoy it because you're just worried about breaking it. And if you fly a cheap one, you can just concentrate on enjoying it. When you break it, it doesn't matter. It's it's cheap to fix. That's the great thing with this hobby. And sometimes you see. People have got the really expensive planes and really expensive helis. They take the hobby so seriously that they're not having any fun. And then you get the people that have just spent, like, got the cheapest gear and they're having a right laugh, really enjoying themselves. So I would say with RC, get what you can comfortably afford and comfortably afford to repair as well. You know, I see so many people at like aeroplane clubs that buy these expensive models and then when they crash them, they're all upset and they're, and they're all depressed for, for ages and everything. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend more than you're comfortably able to afford to fix. You know, I, I, used, to, I used to really want a mansion. But the trouble is, if you get a mortgage on a mansion, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost so much on the upkeep and everything that your life's just going to be a stress you know if you've got to pay 40 grand a month for the next 25 years what happens if business slows down and you can't afford it anymore then you're stressed so i think you're better off to have a little bit less in life but to be comfortable and not not be worried about how you're going to pay for stuff So I'd love a massive house one day with land and stuff, but not if it means having a massive mortgage. Because the stress of that will not make you happy. Best cheap crawler, someone says. Probably the, probably the RGTs. Go on, Banggood, look at the RGTs. I'll tell you for a cheap crawler, probably some of the best. So this is where the glue went into Craig's eye. He was holding the rubber back like this, put the glue in there, and then it flicked. He let go, it flicked, shot up in the eye, sealed the eye shut. So you racers out there are probably cringing right now how I'm doing this, but I'm not in it and I don't care. Yes, well said, Kev, less is more. You know... There's, everyone's got these dreams of stuff that you want. You know, everyone wants the fast cars and the big houses and the lavish holidays. It's all stuff that everybody would love to have, you know. Or, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people. But if you're doing it all on lots of debt, it's going to lead to a stressful life. I'd, I'd rather have a little bit less and not have any debts, personally. Right. Drying off some of this runny glue. I used to use tissues, like toilet paper and stuff for getting off the excess super glue, but then you get it all stick to it. Whilst if you use a rag, not as bad. Right, now I'm still gonna leave the glasses on because I'm gonna bolt these on now. And sometimes you just forget yourself when you spin it and then the super glue can flick up and get you. So, a new rule for me, if I'm working on something and there's fresh super glue around, goggles on. Really not worth it if you get it in your eyes. 
So there, I dropped it there. That could have flicked up and gone in the eyes. So my goggles are staying on. Right, so now, you could do with a little stand of putting it on, actually, because I don't want the tyres to sit on the actual car until the super glue's properly dried. So these, with the thing sticking out, these are the front ones. That on there, boom. You've got to be careful on Tamiya that you don't do the wheel nuts up too tightly. That's a big mistake you can make. I used to make that mistake. And what happens is you break the hex and then the tyres get tight and they don't turn properly. So they've got a nylon lock in there, so you, you don't need to over tighten them. Glue, 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 someone says. Do you have your cats, Kev? Yeah, I've got a couple of cats. What do you reckon of this kit? It's a good budget build. It's good for a beginner. It's good for someone not wanting to spend too much money. It's good if you want close racing. Until I've raced it though, I'm not gonna really know how much I enjoy it. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. I like the buggy racing, really. Ugga dugger then. No, don't ugga dugger these. These wheel hexes are plastic. They're not strong. I used to do that with a manta ray. I used to over tighten the wheels. You split the hex and then the wheels keep falling off. Well, no, they don't fall off. They get the hex splits and then it goes on further, rubs on the bearing and it goes tight. Then you can never get it tight. What do you think of WPL products? Yeah, all right. All right, for cheapo. What are your cat's names? Puggy? Puggy and the other one, well, her actual name's Daisy, but I call her Pocket, because I used to put her in my pocket when she was a kitten. I used to go out off-roading in the Land Rover. She used to sit there on the seat next to me. All my friends used to hold her. I remember taking Pocket into Tesco's, in my pocket, and I put, put her on the conveyor belt. And as all the food was going down, the lady picked up the cat, thinking it was a toy cat to, you know, just scan the barcode. She said, oh my God, it's a real one. <laughs> right, that's that done. So next up is now putting the body on and the body posts. So I think body posts, I'm going to leave them off for now. I'm not sure what posts I've got to use yet. So I think we're going to put the paint the body, put the body together. Or well, I don't know. I have to give it a bit of thought on the body. But see, that's all I see. So now, I'm, see, look, I'm playing with it. I'm spinning that round, and that can make the super glue fly off and go in your eye. So, yeah, leave these on. All right, well, I think that is going to be it for this live o people. We got, we got more done than I thought we was going to get done. Got it all in there. Just got to do a little bit of soldering in there. Make sure that it all works and everything. Get the body done. And that's going to be another day. Possibly tomorrow. I don't know. I've got some other stuff I've got to get on with as well tomorrow. So I might not get a chance. But possibly tomorrow. But right. Thanks everybody for watching. Yep. See you tomorrow Andy. Cheers for your help on the build. Uh, oh we've got a thousand people in the comments now. Right. Come on everyone. Everyone is viewing. If you enjoy my videos, give us a thumbs up. If you don't enjoy the videos, give us a thumbs down. So that's a challenge to everyone. If you go on, if you go on the stream, you'll see a little thumbs up and you'll see a little thumbs down. And if everybody can click one of them, one or the other, look, if you go on there, look, I know a lot of people don't know what it is, what I'm talking about. But if you go on the stream there, look, you get a thumbs up and you get a thumbs down. So if you like my video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Let's see if we can get everybody doing at least one of them. I don't care which one you do, just be honest. If you thought it was a crappy stream, then give me a thumbs down. I deserve it, don't I? So thumbs up or thumbs down. Or if you don't care, don't do anything. Whatever, I don't really care. <laughs> right, so all your comments are gone now, so I can't even comment anymore here. Oh, here they are.
Right, yeah, thumbs up. Everybody thumbs up in. When will you buy a Goblin Roar? Got one. Got a Goblin Roar. Let me quickly show you. So, yeah, so this is stuff we've got coming up on the channel, actually. So I've got this thing here. So I want to fly a few of these foamy jets first before I fly the real one, just to get the hang of it. So we've got that. We've got a lossy drag car, so I can race it up against the Traxxas drag car. I've got to do a bit of repair work to the long sausage, speed sausage. Bang good special down there. That's a truck here that we were just building. So that's what it's going to look like, even though I'm probably not going to use their stickers. I'll probably use my own stickers. Then moving over here, we have the Gorgons, which you can win. There's a link down below if you want to win these Gorgons. we got, I don't know what to do with that yet. This is brand spanking new, vintage Tamiya Lamborghini. They're worth quite a lot of money, actually, so I'm not really fully sure what to do with it. Unopened as well. Never been opened. Look, still got the seal on there. We've got this to finish building. We're going to race. We're going to race these very soon. In, in the next few weeks, we're going to race these. We've got the Tamiya to build. Here's the Goblin Roar. It's a 580 Nitro, but we're putting in a massive engine that's supposed to go into the 700 size. So that's all the stuff in there to build that. There you've got that dragster. That's going to come out. I've already shown you the stuff next door. But for those of you that are just joining the stream, I'll quickly show you. Oh, this here, Outcast AS. This is a brand new one. I've just been editing that video today. And I've got a load of upgrades here. Look, I've got this here, custom RC upgrade, chassis brace in there. I've got a load of M2C upgrade, chassis and stuff. That's going on. This thing here is a jet turbine that I've just got. Thing's massive. I mean, this is, this is the nose look. And that's like, that's probably the length. I don't know, look, just, just see, look, that's my hand on the nose. There, that's my hand on the nose. And that's how big the nose is. And that goes on the front of there. And look, look at that, it's massive. And then the wings are over there. So it's called a J10. I've got that there, Hangar 9 Beast. We've got to fly that. That's got a, that's got a petrol engine in it, 111cc. This thing here has got a real jet engine. It runs on actual jet fuel. Look in there, look, that is an actual jet engine. Shame we can't see the rest of it. It's got a vector thrust on the back of it, this is called. So you've got all the flappy things on the, on the wings, but it's got a vector nozzle as well. And what that means is you can prop hang it. You can get this, I don't think it's called, it's called something else. I'm not really sure what it means, but you can get it up at an angle like that. And you can hover it. And that's because of that thing there. Here's the wings that are for the beast over there. Uh, what else we got? We've got this build coming up and we're going to make these as fast as possible. Uh, got this boat that we flew the other day. We've got this plane that we're going to fly soon. We've got the upgraded monster truck steering system. So this here is the same system that Monster Jam uses. So we've got to get that fitted soon. And a couple of coolers there. Mm, that's about it. What's going on in here? Still got to do a bit of work on the old monster. Tyres, we've got two punctures. So this one here's really gone flat now, look. I think I'm gonna to struggle trying to pump this up again because it's come off the bead. So we've got to try and get that back on there and then pump it up and then find the hole and plug the hole. I've got a tyre repair kit here. It's only a small little hole. We've got to pump them up again, find where the hole is, and then shove one of these, these things in there. And if that fixes it, happy days. If it doesn't fix it, we're gonna to have to get a tyre specialist in to fix it. I've got, to, I've got to replace this bent falling bar. I turned it round because I was going to put a jack under there and jack it up and see if I can straighten it. But my jack's too tall to go under it and I don't think it will straighten anyway. I think we've got to really put in some sort of a press. And then we've got the steering system which consists of the orbital valve, which is the valve that attaches to the steering column. So you've got the steering wheel up in there, the orbital valve, and then the line's coming off. You get a couple of the lines go back to the pump and then you've got a couple of lines that go down to the steering rams. So with the new system, I've got to get all the hosing remade to thicker lines because they flow more, more pressure, more consistency, all that stuff. And then we've got the new steering pump that goes on the back of the engine there. Look at all that V8 goodness there, look. So that, that goes on there. And then we've got bigger lines that we've got to get made. I've got a bigger tank that comes all the way up and it's got something in there that 
because on this, when you're jumping, it can froth up and you get a lot of air mixing in with the fluid and then your steering goes soft and hard and stuff. So with the new system, that doesn't happen. The new system can even work when it's upside down. So we've got to get all that lot on there. What else have we got to do on this? I think that's it really. I've got to make, I want to make a, I've got a tube bender now. So I want to make a little cage that goes round the fuel tank. Cause if you roll it over, this is just soft metal here, you know, just for the body mounts. You want something really to protect the tank. So when you roll it over, you don't smash the tank in. I've got to make that. I've got to make some straps that my friend Steve's going to make me. All the safety tethers that go on to hold all these bits on to keep you guys all safe when you're watching. So that's that. I still want to give that a turbo at some point, but that's definitely not priority at the minute. Right, so that's that. That is it. So you guys that enjoyed, give us a thumbs up. You guys that didn't, give us a thumbs down. And I'll see you again, maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe. And there is a, a video on the main channel that I put out today with DRC boats. So go and watch that one as well if you haven't seen it already. That's Stempy in there. A lot of you guys wanted to see Stempo, Stempo out. So he's in there. Uh, so yeah, nice one dudes. Thanks for keeping me company while I'm building this thing. We're going to take it racing soon. That's probably going to be probably on this channel. This, this channel here is RC focused. The other channel, RC as well, but monster trucks and other stuff as well. So if you want only RC in this channel, uh, if you want RC and other stuff, both channels. Right, see you later guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>